This video is about applying generating function to solve a Poisson function for Fibonacci sequence. So, um, first take a look at the uh, Fibonacci sequence expression. And uh, first, I have 0 equals to 1. I have 1 equals to 1. And then, when n is bigger than 2, uh, we have I have n equals to I have n minus 1 plus I have n minus 2. Because in the following step, then, this is very annoying, so to change this um, situation, we further suppose that there exists uh, that f minus 2 and f minus 1, and they are all 0. So that we, after we apply this, this equation can be used to every, uh, whatever if n is bigger than or equal to 0. Say if uh, uh, f n equals 0, and we First, we have to mention about this. We have to first here write a judge function. The function is about to write like this. Is it shows that when n equals to zero, this one gives to one, and when n is not equal to zero, and this function gives to zero. So we add this, and you see that. Now this function can be generalized to every n not smaller than zero. You see that f zero equals to f minus two plus f minus one, and plus you see n equals zero and plus one. And for f one equals to f minus one plus f zero, and plus you see n equals to one, and this function gives to zero. So you get one zero. If we you further make an um, comparison, you can find this n can be generalized to zero easily, so we can cancel out this limitation. And for the next step, we have to make the list of the generating function. The generating function writes like this one. First, uh, how to get this function? You see, first. Uh, we multiply x power n to every element, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we get this one. And then we use summation. It is still the equation. They are still equal, so we get this function. And this is also called the first step of generating function. And so the next step is, you see this is n minus 1, n minus 2. We don't want this because if we want to change every element in the form of this one, we have to take I have n rather than I have n minus one, I have n minus two. So we have to change this variable into something like n or t or lambda, not like a minus something. This is what we don't like. So the following steps gives you how to change these variables. First, we remain this to be the same. And we change this one. You see, when n equals to zero, it is x power zero multiply i of minus one. And you see i of minus one, we have make assumption it is equal to zero. So it equals to n equals to one. Because the first element is equal to zero. And the same theory applies because this is i of minus two and i of minus one are both zero. So we use this one. And equals to here, 2 here, we multiply from n equals to 2. And for this equation, you'll see that as long as n is not 0, it gives 0. So we made a um, summation is that this equals to n equals to 0. Um, because when n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, it is always 0. So it equals to 1. The whole equation equals to 1. So Further, we write further like this. This I make unchanged, and this we use the change of variable. You know, you know here from n minus one, n equals to one. What if we change n minus one into that another n? So this gives x power n plus one, and because this plus one uh, x, we further make suppose it is a variable, so we can get this x out, because this is x power n plus 1, we get 1 out is x multiply this summation. And for the same theory applied, this is x square multiply this summation. So in this way, we change uh, these two formation into the uh, same as the first element. So from here, we give like this. 
this summation equals to x plus this summation equals to x squared multiply this summation plus 1. And you see that if we make assumption that the whole summation equals to capital X, capital Fx, and then we get this one. Capital Fx equals to x multiply Fx plus x squared multiply Fx plus 1. And this, uh, uh, in obviously, you can solve the expression for capital X. So capital Fx equals to minus i squared plus, uh, minus x plus 1 and 1. For remember that uh, the generating function is that if we can express the this function into something like x plus uh, x minus alpha 1 c1 c2 i plus alpha 2 blah 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 because mm, we have made proof before we studied um, the generating function this equals to not not doing not right not right correct. this is not in the correct form is c this one is the correct form forget about that plus uh, so on because each of these can be expressed c1 alpha and you see that and to show how to prove this uh, because we have assumed that you know this function because this is uh, the basic skill of the generative function to show that you see if this uh, suppose Xn equals to alpha 1 plus alpha power 1 plus alpha 1 power 2 plus dot 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 and then alpha 1 multiply as n equals to alpha 1 1 alpha 1 2 plus dot 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 so because it powers to infinity so we if we um subtract these two equations together we can get as n multi uh, subtract alpha 1 as n equals to alpha 1 zero that is 1 so that is how we get this so they are equal so um what we need to do is uh, how to change this equation into that form because we prefer this form so we can use the generating functions you see that there is a root in here right so we have to solve the root of this uh, the root is when this function equals to zero and here got s1 is this or this and s2 so we can express the function in this way because we don't like this minus sign you see there is actually no minus sign so we can get this minus sign out so we get this equation because the fx so now we can write x um capital fx equals to this and this we can write it equals to this plus this and because we don't like this form so we need to change the um, common factor into 1 that gives 1 plus this one and 1 plus this one and we use c1 and c2 to represent and now we need to solve c1 and c2 how to solve c1 and c2 that is we multiply this whole element into the right hand side so it gives 1 equals to c1 multiply this one and plus c2 multiply this one so to solve this c1 and c2 we first make assumption that when x equals to 2 uh, square root 5 minus 1 over 2 and we get this c2 this one and when i is equal to minus uh, square root 5 plus 1 over 2 and we get c1 equals this one you see that here both these two x are less than 1 so we can use the generating function but since we know we don't have to worry about that because in um, the case we are studying it is always less than one so we just make a check this whether if it is one or not so we further give this one now fx can be written here like fx equals to this one 
multiply this and this one multiply this. So here we got the thing we want that is get the form of this one. We we'll see here alpha one, alpha two. Here alpha one is minus two over square root plus one, and alpha two is two over square root five minus one. So as we uh, have mentioned uh, in the above lecture that if the function has only one equation, uh, has only one solution equals to uh, a power n. If it has two repeated solution, it, uh, it equals to n plus one multiply n a power n. And if it has three repeated equation, it equals to that. And here you see the function has only one, um, not repeated, only one solution. That is this one and this one. There's no square root or something like that. So if I can be restricted that you see this is the constant number, just leave it here. And you know that this equation from change of this one, we can change it to this. And so here there's uh, the C1, C1 is this one, and we use the summation function that this is actually equals to and equal to zero, and alpha one is square root five plus one two. This one, um, because we have a proof that this equation exactly is that this is exactly the same with this one. You are here it mentioned that that, and so this function gives like this one. So we can now write f x equals to this one. When what uh, you know about f x? Uh, what is f x? If x is just the function we want to write about, that now we have checked that just this expression is the Fibonacci sequence expression. That this is Fibonacci sequence expression. You see, we if we further check that if f one is f one, then it equals one. So it satisfies. And if you don't believe that, you can check f2, f3, and u2 infinity. So that's how we show the Fibonacci sequence equation by applying generating functions.